everyone, I'm Dr. Marie Garcisa and welcome to our course, The Child and Adolescent Learners and Learning Principal. Today, we're going to discuss Discovery Learning by Jerome Bruner. Jerome Bruner was an American psychologist who made significant contributions to human cognitive psychology and cognitive learning theory in educational psychology. Bruner regarded the aim of education as being the creation of autonomous learners who had learned how to learn. Being a constructivist, Jerome Brunner believes that learners construct their own knowledge for themselves. According to Brown in 2006, Discovery learning is an active hands-on style of learning where the student participates actively in the learning process rather than passively receiving knowledge as he were an empty vessel to be filled by the instructor. Now let us proceed to the importance of the room Brunner's theory to education. First, it promotes engagement among students. Second, it improves the student's motivation. Third, it makes the students more independent and responsible. Fourth, it helps the student to be more creative. And last, it helps the students to develop their problem-solving skills. Both Brunner and Vygotsky emphasize a child's environment especially the social environment, more than PAJ did. Both agree that adults should play an active role in assisting the child's learning. Brunner Levygotsky emphasized the social nature of learning, citing that other people should help a child develop skills through the process of scaffolding. The scaffolding is an instructional process in which the instructor provides carefully programmed guidance, reducing the amount of assistance as the student progresses through his task learning. Brunner suggested that students may experience or represent tasks in three ways. First is an active representation. Second is iconic representation. And third is symbolic representation. In inactive representation or action-based, a student learns best when he or she is able to manipulate objects, touch it, and feel it. This is very applicable to preschool and elementary learners. Adolescent learners can also benefit from this, applying learner-centered activities. For iconic representation or image-based, learning takes place when lessons are introduced with visuals. When we are learning a new subject, it is often helpful to have diagrams or illustrations to accompany the verbal information. Children and adolescents can both benefit from this idea, especially during this time of social media, YouTube, and other computer-mediated technologies. For symbolic representation or language-based, the learners use symbols and words to represent and understand information. In the symbolic stage, knowledge is stored primarily as words, mathematical symbols, or other symbol systems, such as music. As the modes of representation imply, teacher needs to consider the learner's thinking and capacity. This tells us the lesson must be introduced in a way that is neither too easy for learners to understand nor too hard for them to solve. Thus, Brunner in 1977 suggests to apply spiral curriculum, a process wherein concepts and skills are revisited and learned as successively 
higher levels with more depth and breadth students move through the grade levels in spider approach there is a bigger chance for students to acquire full understanding of concepts and skills as these are being re-emphasized many times as they progress to higher levels now here are my questions number one what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of using the spiral progression approach? Number two, do you think that scaffolding is an effective approach to achieve higher levels of development? If yes, give examples based on your experiences. Thank you and stay safe.